first of all, apologies for the sound quality. There's probably some uh, clicks and uh, pops. Uh, for that, I do apologize. I've tried multiple times this morning, and this is actually my 30-second attempt at making the video. So patience is a virtue. Uh, so when you see the live uh, feed, you'll see the FXCM trading station here on the left-hand side, and then the quant tower uh, heat maps on the right-hand side. Now, this is all uh, explanatory, um, self-explanatory. You wouldn't really need me to talk to you about that. Obviously, if it's green, then it's, you know, it's bullish, and if it's red, then it's bearish. But the only thing to bear in mind, if you do see the live feed, um, if you see red down here on the, on the government bonds, this is risk on. So if it's red, then that's good for stocks. If it's green, then that's bad for stocks. So we saw um, the yields, they, they rose. And so when they do, then the stocks go up. So when the yields crash and that goes green, then that's bad for stocks, okay? So at a high level, keep an eye on that. This is really good also if you're trading dollar yen. Um, so if you look at the, the treasury bond and the, the 10 year, and if they're in negative territory, they're red here on the live feed, that's positive for stocks and that's positive for UJ dollar yen. Okay, so if that goes green, then we can look to sell the dollar yen, right? So that's obviously uh, commodities and uh, gold and silver, they dumped really hard. And that's probably to do with um, um, people, you know, cutting losses on the hedge funds and stuff. They also said it's bullion bank manipulation. Um, perhaps they're selling it to get a really good price to buy. Um, I don't know, but it's a lot of heavy selling on the metals. So that does coincide to this, what we're seeing, uh, the risk on with the government bonds. So obviously if the yields rise then gold should fall, there is also that logic. And also there's also the retail. The retail were really long. And so as we can see here on the SSI snapshot, so this is all fairly straightforward. Um, keep an eye on those correlations. Correlations are sort of breaking down a little bit over time, but um, this, if it's red, it's risk on. So that kind of helps to explain the gold and the silver, okay? So you look at the left-hand side and there's, um, there's a few things to talk about. Um, so SSI snapshots. Um, so if it's green, then it's a buy. If it's red, then it's a sell. So if it, the number becomes larger and it comes away from zero, then it's more of a sell. And if that number becomes smaller, um, it becomes more of a buy. So let's use the dollar, um, the crude oil. If that number becomes seven or maybe eight, I don't know, like Monday, Tuesday, that uh, becomes more of a sell, okay? If that, goes, that number becomes smaller, then that's more of a buy. But at a high level, it's a, it's a sell. But if it moves away this way at a, a low level, it's a buy. So keep it nice and simple. Just think of like, um, if it's plus, then the retail are long, so it's a sell. If it's negative, then the retail are short, so it's a buy. So we can see the dollar, uh, euro dollar, they're currently selling, so therefore it become a buy. But in order for it to be a true buy, where the high and the low level agrees, then that number needs to go away from zero. And as we can see on the SSI, it looks like that number is getting closer to zero, so uh, 50%. So this is your neutral line, that's uh, the uh, bull and bear line. So um, that's the SSI snapshot. So basically, you can think of it like a, a camera at a high level, um, whether something's a buy or a sell, like the oil. And then we look at it like a, a movie. Um, so that's the low level, and that's the movement across time. So the DAX is currently a sell, but if it gets away from, um, say, if it goes to two, it becomes a, a strong sell. But if it moves towards zero, then it's more of a buy. And you see that the US 30 and the S&P are actually a, a buy because the retail have sold. And the reason why they sold is because of the news and the coronavirus. And so that's how that works. So um, SSI snapshots, you can see how, um, so that explained that. So the SSI indicator itself. So when they go long, then it becomes a sell. And when they sell it, then it becomes a buy. So uh, let's have a look at that point here. So there's a big uh, candle here, quite a bearish candle. They went long at that point. And you just follow price all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. 
And at this point on this doji candle, there was a lot of indecision. So what, what I think would have happened, there would have been some news event or something, something that caused them to sell. They probably saw the heavy selling from the high and they thought, right, okay, this is, this is the right thing to do. I mean, like, look at this, it's going to come down, right? So when, once it came down from that high on that doji at the very, uh, the high of the day, the, the herd, all of them uh, sold in heaps. Now, once this crosses, that confirms the sentiment. And what will happen is that they'll hold on to their losses and they'll think, well, okay, it won't really go up that far. You know, um, they'll have their stock probably 100 pips away. And then it keeps going and going. But they would move their stops, as we see on the Quasi DB service. They will always move their stops because they think they can outsmart the market. And at a point where they're going to have um, finance is issues and they're going to have like margin calls, they'll give up. So we saw a peak there, which is a crazy rally, really, if you think about it. And then we saw a peak here on the sentiment. And that tells us that the stops were here because we saw a reversal. And we've seen how this could potentially become a sell over time. And when that SSI line crosses the 21 day, which that's that line there, the 21 day moving average, when that with these two lines cross, that's a nice confirmation for a sell. So it's basically, um, yeah, it's liquidity probe and a liquidity probe, and it'll come down and it'll take their stops. It'll come up and take their stops, and it'll come down and take their stops and for the rest of our lives. And that's how this works. So the key is absolutely imperative that you know which way, you know, the, the right side of the trade. So you wouldn't get caught. You'd look at that and go, right, well, hang on a minute. It's actually becoming a buy. What, why would you hold on? Why would you continue selling when you saw this? Okay, so that's how that works. This is the average long price and this is the average short price. Um, so anything above that, that would be slightly unusual because uh, retail traders shouldn't really be making money. They shouldn't really be profiting on average. So if it goes above, it's slightly unusual. If it goes below, it's slightly unusual. It does happen. Um, the retail traders can make money. Um, you know, after all, if they lost money all the time, they'd give up and they'd leave the casino. And then they'd probably think about trying to make money somewhere else, like, I don't know, like sports betting or something like that. So. Um, if they make money, it'll keep them. It's like the carrot on the stick. So, you know, it sort of dangles in front of their face and thought, well, I made 50 pips. So that's not too bad. But, you know, look at their history, how much they actually really made. So what's really important is to keep an eye on the trend. And one of the very few truths that you'll find in trading is that the retail will hold on to losses and they'll, they will move their stops. Um, as soon as they get into profit, then they'll take, take their profit. So um, <laughs> it's like engineered to um, humans are like the worst um, traders, really, because they allow their emotions to, you know, come into the fray. Um, so that's that. It's the eight minute video. Hopefully you understand this. This is a recent thing that I've learned, actually, is that if that's red, that's risk on. So we'll have to see what's happening on Monday. Note that the US indices are actually a sentimental buy, but the European forces, they're actually a sell. So um, note dollar yen is still a sell. So we're looking probably to sell the rally on the dollar yen, especially if that number becomes larger. Okay, so that's the confirmation across time. So hopefully the video wasn't too bad with the sound quality. And if it was, I do apologize, but I've tried multiple times now and uh, it's now two o'clock. So I need to do something else with my day. So, uh, yep, and have a good one, and I'll speak to you later.